Hi guys and welcome back to NoteFlow. In the last video we saw together what an ad field is, we saw how to add some noise and how to distort it to make it look more interesting, and then we introduced the concept of masking. Today it's all about masking. Being able to manipulate masks is a crucial step in making your terrain look more interesting. So thanks for joining me and let's start. <music> So here we are in Houdini. I will create a geonode and go inside. I will then create a night field, add a simple noise, connect the first input to my height field. And I want to add a noise that's a little bit more characteristic. So I will choose the Manhattan cellular F2 minus F1. I want to center my noise so I only have positive values, reduce the amplitude, and reduce the element size to something like this. But if I want to constrain this effect only to certain areas, that's why we have this input. I would like to start introducing the height field draw mask. This node needs your height field so we can connect it. Make sure to go into the viewport and press enter and you will be able to draw a lasso for your mask. So feel free to play with it. And as you can see, you have lots of customization in your patterns and what you want to create. So pretty useful, right? An alternative to this one that I will just delete is the height field paint. I will plug it in. And as you can see, this node allows me to paint certain features. There are some benefits. For instance, like you see the border is smoother and it's more natural. Although you have lots of parameters here, if I change this off the edge to zero, that will be the same as what we saw before. And you can really see every stroke the next one I would like to show is the height field mask by geometry. I can plug it in, and as you can see, this one needs some geometry to build mask from. Let's actually create a simple sphere. I want to give this sphere a uniform scale of 300, and I will see that the sphere is creating a mask for you. And over here, we have the result that we expect. So what is the advantage of using the mask by object compared to the height field paint or the height field draw mask? You see, if I want to move a paint stroke, I cannot really move it, right? I will need to delete it and then repaint it. But with this method, I can always go into my sphere and move it. In that way, I can change the position of some mountains. And that's very useful when you have a more complex terrain, being able to change the formations just with some proxy geometry and making the terrain your own. You know, I could duplicate some spheres and with a merge, I will simply be connecting the merge in here and my second sphere over here. And then I can really start to sculpt my terrain with the feature I like. So let's say we are satisfied with the position of these mountains. The problem that we have over here is that our mask is very sharp and it's sort of breaking on the edges. We need some blur. So over here, I want to create an HF mask blur. This node is very important, and as you can see, I already fixed that problem. Now, if we just visualize your mask, that will be easier to see what's going on. But let's experiment on different methods that this node offers us. The most relevant ones are the expand, that allows me, as the name implies, to expand my mask. Of course, you have the opposite, the shrink, that will just shrink your mask. And then you have a sharpen that will do the opposite. So of course, now it's pretty sharp. You cannot get sharper than this. That's why it's not really changing. But I find this node extremely useful for editing your masks. For now, again, I would like to put it on blur and leave it something like that. So I really like the way it's blending with the terrain and it feels more natural. So for the next example, we need a more complex terrain. So in this case, I will just quickly delete all of this and I will start from my ad field and create a head field noise. So I played a little bit with the noise until I had something that looked a little bit more interesting. And then I can create one of the most important nodes where manipulating masks. And that's the height field mask by feature. As you can see already like that, it gives us a very interesting mask. By default, it's selecting the slopes, as you can see. And you can play with the ramp to make it sharper on some borders or make it blurrier. As you can see, now it's blurrier and here it gets sharper. Over here, you can do the same and play with the settings until you find something that works for you. Usually the defaults are pretty nice and I usually tend to play with these parameters over here. Something like that works fine for me now. Let me hide it for a moment so we can explore the other ones. Here we have a mask by height. Very useful because it will just mask a certain height. As you will see for now we're just masking the height zero. That's not really what we want. So we can check compute range. This will remap these values based on your height field. That way it will be easier for you to control your mask. So imagine that you want to create a mask only for the top peaks as you want to add some snow only there. So this can be a very useful one. Or maybe you want to add some colors for the deposits. In that way, you just need to lower this one up to the lower parts of the terrain. And as you can see, you have a mask of the bottom parts. So masking my height is still a very important one. Let me uncheck it for now. We have a mask by curvature. As the name implies, this will mask all the zones that have more curvatures. So for now, I will just compute my range. And as you can see, it's working pretty nicely by default, although we can play a little bit more with it. Now again, this pattern could be very useful for some shading later on to add some textures and colors. So by playing with it a little bit more, I was able to get a mask that looks like that. Again, very useful and pretty fun. Let me uncheck it for now. Then we have the mask by direction. In this one, you can change the angle spread to make the effect 
effect stronger and with the gold angle you can define the direction of your projection. It can be very useful for some effects where you want only a side of your mountain to be painted in a particular fashion. And lastly you have a mask by occlusion. You can play with these parameters until you get a result you want. It works pretty nice as default but for calculating occlusion I would suggest a node called Highfield Mask by Occlusion. As you can see you basically have almost the same settings but it's nice to keep that organized and separated from other masks that you might be creating. So again you can change the maximum occlusion and then you can change the minimum over here. So you see these masks by themselves are not really useful. Ideally you want to combine some of these masks to make some effects more interesting. So let's go back to the mask by feature. Let's say I want to restrict this occlusion only on the lower areas. In order to do that you need a node called Heightfield Vop. But there is a slight problem. You see, if we visualize this one, we have our mask saved in the mask layer. When later we are creating another mask, we see we don't really have a new layer. Basically, this one it's overriding the one before. So what I will do is creating a height field copy layer. So because I'm masking only the lower parts, I will name this one bottom. I will then just duplicate this one and put it here. And over here, I will name this one just for being clear, occlusion. I quickly organize my graph and now we can go inside of the Hatfield Vop. The key in the Hatfield Vop is to bind, that will mean import these attributes inside. As you can see inside, we already have the height, but in this case, we want to manipulate the masks. So we can just delete this one and I will create a new bind node that I want to name bottom. So by default, the one that we're seeing over here is the last layer that was called mask because the mask layer is just a default of Udini and it will be always shown over here. So just to be clear, I will create a bind export and I will call this one mask. In this way, my bottom will now be my mask. And as you can see, I can see it correctly. The next stage will be to duplicate this one and I want to import my occlusion. Now that's inside, I just need to simply multiply the two. In that way, we will have a blend of these two masks and I can just just connect this one to the output and as you can see my occlusion is only being shown on the lower parts. Now of course this is a very simple example but this should give you an idea of how to manipulate these masks because now if you go out this is all procedural so you could clearly go into the mask by feature and maybe change the height to something different and as you can see the area where the occlusion is calculated will vary. As you can see with this knowledge you could create an infinite amount of masks. Lastly let me add a mask clear so we don't need to see our mask and you see all this data is being stored or the future cover here. Now, if you want to send some colors, you could use a height field visualize. And as you can see, just by connecting and checking compute range, you can see you can add some layers over here, let's say slopes, and now my slopes will have this color. You can also add bottom, for instance, and now the bottom will have this color. And that's just the basic of how you could assign different colors to your masks. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really hope you learned something new. We covered all the possible nodes for masking manipulations. I really hope you could make something beautiful with them. If you managed to try this setup out, let me know. Just write me a comment down in the video. And if you need any help, just write me in the comments and I will be happy to answer. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe as that really helps the channel to grow. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.